Bonjour, monsieur. Oh, I know it's early, but you told me to wake you up at 7 sharp this morning, so that you could make the most of your day and not laze about in bed for hours. Your words, not mine. Is it too bright, master? You specifically instructed me to open the curtains wider if you complained about the brightness. Now, you didn't ask for this, but I thought some sweet ginger tea would give you a boost of energy for the day ahead, so here you go. Allow me to set this on your night table while you're awake. Did you sleep well? Were you bothered by the storm at all? It rained quite heavily, but the sun is shining today and the ground is almost dry. But tell me, master, why did you not allow yourself to sleep for longer today when it is the first day in weeks that you can finally rest? Because the day would pass too quickly if you slept in and you wouldn't have time to enjoy every second of every hour. <laughs> oh no, I'm not mocking you at all, but you make me laugh, Master. You have an eccentric way of looking at things. I find it quite charming. I'm well, thank you. I was out early to pick some berries in preparation for your breakfast. I made raspberry jam. <laughs> your favorite. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to whet your appetite so you will leave your bed quicker. I have been working here for a few months now. I feel I've got to know you quite well. There we go. Shall we start with the usual? A warm bath and a delicious breakfast. Oh. What do you mean differently? What would you like to do instead? You'd like to get dressed first and have a bath later tonight? Very well. Here, let me open the wardrobe for you and present your options for today. We have quite an array of choices that could suit the lovely weather outside. Firstly, how about the classic morning suit? Elegant, yet comfortable. This is perfect if you plan on having guests, or perhaps a morning stroll around the estate. It's always been a favorite with its soft fabric and tailored fit. But perhaps you prefer something more relaxed today? A crisp white shirt with those lovely brown trousers? It gives off a charming yet laid-back look. Perfect for a day of leisure. Hmm, given the sunshine, maybe the breezy linen trousers and light blue shirt would be fitting. It's great for when you want to enjoy the gardens or a walk by the lakeside. And finally, uh, there is the formal attire. I doubt you will need this for today, but just in case there is an unexpected event, the navy blue suit is freshly pressed and ready. You always look quite dashing in it. So, my dear, which outfit shall we choose for today? Parfait. An excellent choice. It's indeed a beautiful day to embrace the outdoors. Let me get those clothes for you and lay them out. There we are. Would you like me to assist you with dressing, or do you prefer to manage on your own today? Of course. It's always my pleasure to help. I'll start by fetching your undershirt and trousers. And then we'll make sure the shirt is pressed perfectly. There we go. Arms up, please. Let me just fix the color. Perfect. Now, let's 
Let's attend to your hair, shall we? If you would please like to sit here for a moment while I brush it. something similar or is there a particular way you would prefer today absolutely master I'll ensure it's tidy and professional there we go a few strokes here and there and done you look splendid, as always. It's almost unfair how you manage to make any outfit look elegant. <laughs> now that you're dressed, how about we head downstairs for that breakfast I prepared? The raspberry jam should be just perfect with some fresh scones. Here we are. Please take a seat. I'll pour you some tea. Which would you prefer this morning? We have Earl Grey, uh, a nice green tea, or perhaps a special blend I picked up recently? Mm -hmm. Excellent choice. Let me pour you a cup. There you go. The perfect brew to start the day. Now, for the scones and jam. Please, let me know how they turned out. I did try to use the ripest raspberries from the garden. I'm very glad. If there's anything else you need, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll be here to ensure everything goes smoothly throughout your day. Sure, what would you like to know about? About my time here? Oh, I'd be delighted to share, my dear. Um, it's been quite a journey working here and seeing the estate flourish. I've grown quite fond of the routine and, of course, serving you each day. It feels like a home to me now. Well, when I first arrived, everything was new and exciting. The grandeur of the place was a bit overwhelming at first, but I quickly found my rhythm and fell in love with the beauty and charm of it all. The estate itself is quite magnificent, with its sprawling gardens, sophisticated architecture, and, of course, the serene lake, where I often find peace during my free time. I have observed you there quite a few times, reading your favorite books, or writing in your journal. Well, I didn't want to disturb you. With how busy you are every day, Meeting, greeting, and hosting guests, on top of all the work you do in town. I know these moments of solitude must be precious to you. You sometimes feel lonely. Really? But how can it be so when you are 
always surrounded by so many people. Hmm. I see. You feel as though no one truly understands you. And the conversations don't go very deep. That makes sense. But what about your dear friends? Yes, it is true that most of them are very busy with their own lives, families, and estates. May I ask you a personal question, my dear? It's just that I've always wondered why... why you never married. After all, you are young, handsome, and successful. I imagine many ladies must have desired to become your wife. So, why did you choose a single life? You never felt a real connection with any of the ladies who were interested in you? Hmm, I can understand that. Many people marry the wrong people for the wrong reasons. Perhaps you did the right thing. And you still have time to find that special person. The one who will truly understand you and cherish you the way you deserve to be understood and cherished. Believe me when I say that, my dear. You are such a wonderful person and I have no doubt that you would make an even more wonderful partner. I can only envy the lucky person who will get to spend the rest of their days with you. <clears throat> I should probably leave you to finish your breakfast and attend to my morning duties. Yes, master? You would like me to join you by the lakeside today and read you some poetry? <laughs> it would be my pleasure. I will bring your favorite collection. What time would you like to meet there? Eleven sounds perfect. I'm looking forward to it. Ah, Master, you're right on time. Everything is ready for our peaceful morning together. Isn't this just a lovely spot? The sound of the water lapping against the shore. The birds singing in the distance. It's so calming. You have brought a blanket for us to sit on? How thoughtful of you. Let me set it down for us. Here. Make yourself comfortable. I brought some lemonade for us to enjoy. Here you go. I... I beg your pardon? You would like me to... stop calling you master? Just for today. Um... Very well. It will be a bit of an adjustment. You want me to just be your friend today? Of course, I would love nothing more than to be your friend. It's just I'm not quite sure how to behave as your friend. You want me to just behave as myself? 
Oh, master, I'm not sure you would enjoy that very much. Oops, I called you master again. Apologies, master. Oh, sorry. What I mean is, my real self may be a little different from what you are used to. Not entirely, of course, but I'm worried you might not like it. Well, just because I can be a bit spontaneous sometimes. Too spontaneous. Fiery, even, when I have an opinion about something. Obstinate. Shallow. Yes, shallow. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell you, but... You've asked for candidness, so I will. I like nice things. I marvel at luxury, soft fabrics, and shiny jewelry. And I have been told by many a pastor that it is a sin to revere such material pleasures. <laughs> well, I have to admit that this is part of the reason why I was so delighted to hear I had been hired as your personal mate. I knew of you, certainly. I had heard about your beautiful estate, your family's name, and of course your reputation for generosity and refinement. I heard tales about how everything in your estate is so tastefully arranged and cared for. It sounded like a dream to me, being able to work in such a grand place, surrounded by beauty and luxury every day. When I first arrived, I was completely mesmerized by the grandeur of your home, the way the light dances through the stained glass windows. The intricate carvings on the banisters, the sheer size and elegance of it all, it was overwhelming. For someone like me, who has spent most of her life with simple pleasures, it felt like stepping into another world. And then, of course, there's you. I knew I had to make a good impression. <laughs> I wanted to show you that I could be the perfect maid. But in doing so, I kept parts of myself hidden. Parts that I thought wouldn't fit the image of what a maid should be. <laughs> the truth is, I do have a passion for the finer things. I've always been fascinated by the stories behind them. And the jewelry. Oh, the jewelry. Each piece tells a story, doesn't it? It's like holding a little piece of magic. Sometimes when I'm dusting the parlor and the sunlight catches the chandeliers just right, casting little rainbows across the room. I find myself pausing, imagining what it must be like to wear such beauty, to feel the weight of a diamond necklace against my skin, or to have a pair of sapphire earrings that match the color of the sky. I know I shouldn't be so focused on these material things, but I can't help it. They draw me in, like a moth to a flame. I suppose it's a bit of an escape for me. A way to dream beyond the confines of everyday life. To imagine myself in a world of opulence and charm. Please don't think 
poorly of me for these indulgences. You don't. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not often phased by what anyone might think of me, except when it comes to you. You've been so generous and kind to me, and I would hate for you to have a bad opinion of me. I guess that's why I feel so fortunate to be here with you today, in this beautiful place. I enjoy spending time with you. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to be myself. Even if just for today. To be your friend. To speak freely. And to enjoy this moment by the lake. <laughs> it means more to me than you could ever know. Now, how about I read you some poems? I've brought this collection that we haven't looked at in a while. We could play a little game. I could read a poem and you could try to guess the author. You have such extensive knowledge on the matter, I'm sure you will find it no trouble at all. Let us start with... To a butterfly. Stay near me. Do not take thy flight. A little longer stay inside. Much converse do I find in thee, historian of my infancy. Float near me. Do not yet depart. Dead times revive in thee. Thou bringst gay creature as thou art. A solemn image to my heart. My father's family. Oh, pleasant, pleasant were the days. The time when in our childish plays. My sister, Emmeline and I. Together chased the butterfly. A very hunter did I rush upon the prey. With leaps and springs, I followed on from brake to bush. But she, God love her, feared to brush the dust from its wings. So, who do you think? My dear friend, you didn't even let me finish my sentence. <laughs> yes, it's William Wordsworth. Perhaps this was too easy. Yes, the aim of the game is for you to guess correctly, but I at least want you to think about it. I want to see those eyebrows of yours draw together in deep reflection before you give an answer. <laughs> Let me read this one. In the forest. Out of the midwoods twilight. Into the meadows dawn. Ivory, limbed and brown-eyed. Flashes my fawn. He skips through the copses singing, and his shadow dances along. And I know not which I should follow, shadow or song. Oh, hunter, snare me his shadow. Oh, nightingale, catch me his strain. Else moonstruck with music and madness, I track him in vain. <laughs> you 
You are making this face on purpose to humor me, aren't you? <laughs> I thought so. It does not look as natural as usual. Go on. Tell me the name. Correct. Oscar Wilde. Very impressive. What about... Evening star. Twas noontide of summer and midtime of night, and stars in their orbits shone pale through the light of the brighter cold moon mid planets her slaves, herself in the heavens, her beam on the way. I gazed a while on her cold smile, too cold, too cold for me, there passed as a shroud, a fleecy cloud, and I turned away to thee, proud evening star, in thy glory afar. And dearer thy beam shall be, for joy to my heart is the proud part. Thou bearest in heaven at night, and more I admire thy distant fire than that colder, lowly light. Now it seems your brow is furrowed in genuine hesitation. Any guesses? No, not Kipling. Try again. <laughs> no, not Blake either. Do you give your tongue to the cat? That's a French expression. It means... Do you give up? Less poetic, isn't it? Very well. It was Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> of course you knew it. After I told you the name. <sighs> well. This has truly been a delightful morning, but as much as I enjoy being your friend, I do need to return to my duties. I seem afraid. Yes, perhaps I am a little afraid. Afraid that I might actually start to believe we are friends and develop a deeper attachment to you. No, no, you don't need to apologize. It's my own weakness speaking. I'm the one who should be apologizing. I've truly enjoyed this time with you. Sometimes I wish. No, I shouldn't say this. This is precisely what I was afraid of. I think it would be best if I... Yes, Master? How do I feel about you? My dear, I... I have great respect and admiration for you. I find you to be intelligent, agreeable, and most of all, incredibly charming. And that is exactly what concerns me. How I might feel about you. It isn't 
right, is it? It isn't proper. I don't mean to embarrass you, I should... You're afraid you might feel the same way. But... But I am nothing. Just a humble maid here to serve you. No, please don't flatter me. Please don't say these things to me. Don't give me hope. I should leave you to enjoy the rest of your morning. Thank you, master. Thank you. It has truly been a pleasure, but I must go now. <sighs>